Happy Saturday. Today is Saturday, October 17th, week 42 of 2020. We've had a great week. I hope you have too. We're going to make this really quick this week. We're just about to leave to go see Brian race. This will be his second to the last cross country race of the year. His last one is this coming Tuesday. He's really excited, but as usual, he's nervous. So hopefully when we get back from the race, I'll also have some video that I can add into this when I finish my editing. On Sunday, I had an interesting situation where I received a package in the mail from Amazon that was the second wrong product that they'd sent in a row. Exact same product. Brian wanted this hair care thing. It was the right brand that they sent us, but the wrong product. The one they sent us was a beard foam. And I'm thinking, yeah, they, they don't know that this is for a 15 year old boy. Well, 16 year old boy now. But it, it gave me the opportunity to to be kind to someone, even though the situation was not ideal, I could tell when I was talking to the person at Amazon that they don't get a lot of people that are just being nice to them when something's wrong. That's important to me because being kind is contagious. You know, the, the fact that I got an opportunity to just give basic human decency to another person in a, a situation where they weren't expecting it, that, that can have a trickle down effect. That can affect their day. I know it affects my day when, when someone calls me with problems, but they're nice to me. Ben had his baseball game also on Sunday, and that turned out to be a tie game, but they are going to the playoffs, and that playoff game is this evening. Monday, I got to thinking about the fact that, you know, there's people with different hobbies out there of, of things like scrapbooking and journaling and blogging and things like that. This video diary that I do here is my type of scrapbooking. I just like to do it in video. It's really fun in the present, but I also know that in the future, it's going to be something that we can look back on and that we'll have a lot of fun with. And I like to encourage other people to do the same sort of thing in their life, whether it is scrapbooking or journaling or something. Leave something behind for other people to, to have a look at to enjoy what you were enjoying in life at the time. On Tuesday, I got a little bit more of just continuous learning. I love to find things that I don't know anything about and learn a little bit about them. Last week, I talked a little bit about the fact that VR hasn't taken off as much as I would, would have thought at this point, but I did find something really interesting. They've made now, there's a company making these VR contact lenses. So it actually is a contact lens that's on your eye, but it projects images as if you're looking through a headset. So there's no big headset or anything. So what you see in front of you could be like a heads up display or it could be just a, a full on movie type of thing or any type of content that is can be transmitted through those projectors on your eyeballs. It seems a little weird to me, but if they could make them comfortable and safe, that might be really powerful in a lot of ways, more than just entertainment, obviously. There could be tons of things that could be helpful for, well, like for instance, if I had a set of those and they were set up to do face recognition on the people I'm talking to, I could have their name pop up when I look at them. It would help me with names. Is that cheating? I don't know, but it works. It's, it's helpful. Tuesday evening, also at sunset, I got a chance to go out to a friend of ours ranch that's about 45 minutes away from here or so and do some drone video with the 360 camera over the top of their ranch. That was fun. I wish I was a better drone pilot, but I don't get a chance to do that very often. And the nice thing is the 360 camera is very forgiving since it's recording everything in all directions. I just have to be a safe pilot. I don't have to be a great cinematographer pilot, at least not for what we're trying to capture in this particular time. Wednesday, the 14th, was Brian's birthday. He turned 16 on Wednesday. He's very excited about that. He really wants to get his driver's license. We haven't done that quite yet because we've been pretty busy, but I'm sure that we'll be finding a time very soon for him to go take his test so that he can be a legal driver.
Jill and I had a little memory we were thinking about on Wednesday about the day that Brian was born. When we went into the hospital, we figured October 14th, it was probably going to be chilly out. And so we didn't want little baby Brian to be chilly on the way home from the hospital. So we had packed for him a really warm little outfit. Well, it turned out it was in the mid 80s, the day that we brought him home from the hospital. We should have expected that. He was born in Dallas. Instead, he went home in the little onesie that came free from the hospital. <laughs> with a little baby blanket on top of him. So on Wednesday, I spent a lot of time looking through old baby pictures of Brian and trying to find ones that I want to share. It, it's amazing how much they change over the years. And several times I had to double take because some of Brian's baby pictures and Ben's baby pictures look so very similar. So I had to look at the dates and I'm sure Jill can tell the difference between them a whole lot more than I can as, as far as their infant pictures. Mothers seem to be better about that sort of thing than dads sometimes. <laughs> Thursday morning was a very frosty morning. When Brian and I went out to the car to get it warmed up to go, we realized the windshield was completely covered in frost and had to wait a couple extra more minutes before leaving. That's the first time we've had that happen in many months. Thursday also, I don't know what made me think about this, but I was thinking about Brian and I have both have this same condition, I guess you could call it, a uh, trait of we both talk in our sleep. Well, Brian's friends say he says all sorts of weird things that he never remembers. And I got to thinking about how Jill tells this story of one time I was talking in my sleep and she never knows if I'm actually awake and talking to her, if I'm just asleep until I say something really weird. One night I was mumbling in my sleep so she knew I was just talking in my sleep. But very clearly, I, in the middle of my mumbling, I said, awkward, and then was silent and slept the rest of the night. So I don't know what I was thinking about, but apparently it was awkward. On Friday on my lunch break, I came across a video interview of J.P. Sears talking with, can't remember the other guy's name, I'll put a link in the video here. He's also uh, a person very similar to J.P. as far as they're both life coach type people, but J.P.'s also gotten into a lot of comedy lately. It's very funny. They had a, an interesting point in the interview where they talked about the fact that too many people are not okay with not being okay. There's not enough people just being willing to be real and vulnerable. And I was thinking about that and I realized, you know, there's times when it's really helpful for us to talk about the things that we're not all together about in ourselves. Where there's times when it's really helpful to talk about the things in our lives that weren't great. I think I'd like to touch more on some of that sort of thing in these weeks. There's growth in our discomfort. It helps other people to see that they don't have to be perfect either. None of us are. You know, I've talked a little bit in the past about what it was like being a, a child of divorced parents. Not at length, but uh, just enough to, to talk about, you know, the fact that it hurts, that there's still times today when it hurts to think about those time periods. But we come through those. We grow and we learn and we encourage others to come through those types of times. And we, we find that we can heal through anything. Also on Friday, I think it also came from that interview with J.P. Sears, the thing I was thinking about was that it's important for us to try new things. On my monitor here, you can see I've got, you know, do one thing every day that scares you. There's a graphic on here about how routines get boring because of the same thing, but we, when we get out of our routines, we get into new things. And then I really like this one on the bottom down here that says, try new things, go new places, use new tools, and meet new faces. It's, it's good to get out of our comfort zone. It's good to get some place where we're a little scared. I don't mean like watching horror movies scared. I mean scared that we might mess up in something we're trying that's new. It's important for us to get out of those those places where like even with this video diary that I'm doing here, I want to try new things inside of this new types of b-roll, new setting. Uh, right now it's really comfortable to just sit here in my office and record this. It's a nice controlled environment where I can crank out the video but I don't want to just crank out the videos. I want to stretch my creativity. So I want to try different places, different settings. When we go out of town, I've got to find ways to record someplace else doing something else, and that'll get me out of my comfort zone.
Yesterday also, I came across a Facebook post. Where was that? It was in my 360 camera group where a guy by the name of, I wanna pronounce his name right, he's Italian, Nicola Menicassi. He is a guy out in New York City who moved from Italy. He lived in Florence, Italy. About three years ago, he moved here and started working as a tour guide. And he has a, a wonderful YouTube channel called New York in Yellow Shoes, I think is the correct name. I'll, I'll put a link in here. In there, he's you know had to switch a little bit because tour guide business isn't that great right now, but it'll pick up, of course. But he's had to switch to doing videos about places because there's not as many tourists there right now. But he did do a, a video very recently saying New York is not dead. Apparently a lot of people are saying that lately. I hadn't heard it, but apparently he was hearing it. So he was just showing all the places in New York that are very much alive and, and very much thriving. And the post that he put out, I think it was Thursday night, was an invite to people who do video creation stuff. In that post, he was asking for volunteers to join him in a project where video creators work on various video challenges and kind of have a little, seems like a friendly competition with each other that have small prizes in the process but it to me it sounds more like a very helpful creative encouraging group much like how people have like a writers group or my stepdad has a group that he's involved in that does songwriting challenges he likes to write songs and they'll have a monthly theme that they write that they do a challenge on I'm excited about this idea I'm really looking forward to seeing where it's gonna go And that brings us up to Saturday, today. Today, Brian has a race here that's gonna be about, um, I don't know, in a couple of hours he'll, is race time. It's, it happens to be here in town, so that's a good thing. We won't have to drive very far for that. And then this evening, Ben has his baseball game, first game of the playoffs, I believe it is. That'll be a lot of fun. We hope that the weather stays nice. It has been a little bit chilly, but that's not too bad for racing, and it's not too bad for baseball. So it should be a great day. Well, that wraps up week 42 of 2020. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.